What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be tearing down my A6. I'm going to take the distributor intake, wire harness off, all the brackets that are on there because I'm sending this thing out to a machine shop and just those things aren't needed. Pretty much covered in oil since it had such a horrible oil leak. Needed a head gasket when I bought it. I replaced the head gasket. It stopped overheating and uh but it continued to smoke and still leaked some oil from other gaskets but i wanted i never did a compression test on it but since i am keeping this motor i wanted to just take my time and buy some parts for it because i know long term it's a good motor to have these a6s are actually really durable if you take care of them got a lot of head head parts uh just basic tune-up parts that are going to make this it's gonna make it run really good and just be reliable, super reliable. But th these motors are a lot of fun. I do have a, a lightweight flywheel and a good clutch, like a stage three clutch for the tranny. So it should be fun. Just a nice little peppy single, just to have fun with, nothing crazy. Got everything ready to just take it, take it apart. So let's get started. Got a lot of parts off of it already. Gotta make sure it's wrapped up real good. So this is finally happening now that I can move on and start messing with the hatch and uh, slowly start to transition this car into another project as far as builds and, and other motors. So you're probably saying, why the single cam? Why did you choose the A6? Well, there's a few reasons in my mind that I stuck with this single because in my opinion, these single cams are very reliable uh, very underrated and very sourceable in the fact that you can still find parts you can still have have things like you know delivered next day in case anything happens so it's not a completely dinosaur out abandoned uh, single cam so I prefer to put in this car uh, basically what it, what belongs in there and I think is the a6 which comes out of a any 88 to 91 si CRX or hatchback. Now the, the all-wheel drive wagon does come with a A6 as well because I guess you need it for the extra, you know, pull and all that, the system. The reason why I want to take this motor to the machine shop and, you know, as you can see, the head is a little bit different color than the block. So I'm pretty sure pre previously there has been head work done or maybe some type of cleaning. Anyway, when I had gotten this motor, or when let's say when I had gotten this car, it had a bad head gasket, and I replaced the head gasket right when I got it because I couldn't drive the car, it was overheating a lot, and I couldn't really use it like that. So I replaced the head gasket, it stopped overheating, but I noticed it was burning a lot of oil still, uh, kind of making white smoke at times, so I'm not too sure. Never really dug into it, but I did decide to keep this motor since it is matching and it is all, all original with my CRX. So why not kind of like spruce it up in case I ever needed a single cam, I'll, I could have this one, but I did buy an exhaust. I bought an eBay exhaust, so I couldn't help myself. $94 shipped and I'm not really expecting this thing to sound great or nice, but nice little uh, fart cannon will uh, <laughs> make the neighbors happy. This gasket was so early. I, I gonna have to do a lot of cleaning. Machine shop's not gonna do that. <laughs> Always use those Honda filters. And I broke a sensor. Got the intake, all that good stuff off. Just got the wire harness off. Just taking my time. Everything is like super dirty, but funny how the head looks kind of clean and yet the bottom end is still Got a few Kia coatings of oil. So a lot of this stuff I'm probably going to be reusing, obviously. Uh, I'm not going to use the CRX engine harness because I, I these are kind of hard to come by and I want to keep this as uh, stock and original as possible. I'm not going to go with the Skunk 2 manifold. I'm, I'm going to reuse the old uh, original A6 manifold as well as the alternator starter. I have mounts. And... As far as wire harness, like I said, I ordered a PDFI to a multi-port fuel injection harness. I took the time and I spent the money and I, I bought a good harness, a multi-port conversion harness. So 
just wanted to make it easy on myself so that it's clean and not spliced or anything. Just gonna continue on cleaning this up and breaking this down. I called the machine shop and they're they're kind of they're kind of booked right now and I don't want to overwhelm them with my motor, so they said call back in two weeks and see see where they're at. So not really in a super big rush to get this there, but I just want to have it ready. It is the next day, so didn't really get much done the other day, but. I put a degreaser coat on this, which looks a little bit better, nothing crazy. I'm not gonna go crazy cleaning it because I'm just gonna paint it and clean it when I do get the motor back from the machine shop. I'm so excited because Christmas came early today. I got my eBay exhaust in. I'm gonna open this up and show you guys all the piping that comes with it. Also, I took some time and I was actually messing around with these steering knuckles. These are CRX SI steering knuckles. So I was able to get the old ball joint and the old bearings out. If you guys can see, there's no bearing in there and there is no ball joint. So I did it on both of them. Pretty easy process. You just gotta remove the snap rings and uh, take a hammer and kind of whack it out. Stay tuned, we're gonna hook these up with some fresh parts. I did receive the last of my parts for this swap. So basically it is on the machine shop now. Let's uh let's open this exhaust up and show you guys how cool this is. All right. So Taking a closer look, I don't want to remove the plastic yet because I'm not throwing the exhaust on right away. I'd like to keep it uh, kind of preserved. This is the eBay exhaust, like I said, it's $94 shipped. And I've seen this on other videos that people have in which they've installed on their car and it doesn't really sound too bad. I'm not aiming for this car to be a performance car with this motor. This is, like I said, something I can have fun with and just so it's a complete car at the moment and I don't know what's gonna happen exactly with the wagon so it needs a lot of body work and I'm finding more and more rust on it but this exhaust is kind of just to be fun and silly with the hatch. I know it's probably gonna be loud and obnoxious but I think it's cool, it's good piping. I've heard Quickly just wanted to give you guys an overall general idea of the layout on how it would look pretty much underneath the car. Complete exhaust system, pretty cheap. Gotta say, uh, not too shabby. Gonna wrap this back up, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea. It's It comes with all the hardware, and uh, the only thing I'm waiting on is the headers. So that, that would really much complete everything for the swap. So let's go throw a few more coats of degreaser on this engine, and then I'm starving. I think I'm gonna get some food after that. Got that gunk remover. I live by this stuff. Yeah. This thing is filthy. Let this bubble up, break up some of the grease. Usually come over with a toothbrush and rub it in. But since I'm not going crazy, I'm just gonna let this do its thing. Got some on the other side. Greasy, nasty mess. Let that sit for a little while. Come back to that. Got the trans soaking up. I can't believe how freaking filthy these things are. But then again, dirty old car, 30 years of greasiness, oil. Not surprising after you think about it. I'm trying to get the garage in order, it's always a mess. It always seems like I'm uh, behind. But I know I really haven't gotten into these yet. These are my wheels. Let me show you what these look like. I said a little bit about these in detail in the other video. 15 by 8. And they're, I don't know what brand, name brand rims they are. I They were plastic dip, so they need some work. They need some cleaning up, but I think they're going to look good on the hatch. So. 
got these for like pretty much almost free. They do they do need tires, but I'm not really worried about that because I'll just pick up some some tires for the summer. Gonna try to strip them down and just clean them up best I can, and probably just respray them black. To be honest, I don't I don't think I don't really know what other color I would spray them, but I think black would go good with the blue on the hatch. So guys, we're gonna jump right into replacing your lower bowl joint and your wheel bearing. I myself had already popped the old bearings out and I popped the old bowl joints out. So here I have my new new wheel bearing. I left it in the plastic because I don't like the oil to dry up. And I'm using a Moog lower bowl joint. I do like Moog for a few reasons. They're pretty well known and they do make good parts that come with uh, the right components most of the time. As far as uh, a new snap ring, uh, the rubber boot is pretty sturdy and obviously it's pre-greased before uh, it's put together because you cannot uh, grease these once these are in. So Moog is a pretty good company. If you guys are wondering what part number this is, it's K9385. If you wanna give that a look up. As of right now, the parts that you should have if you're already disassembled are two snap rings, one for the wheel bearing, one for the lower ball joint. And you should have a dust cover that was removed, but this is the last thing that's basically gonna go on. If these knuckles look a little funny to you, I did remove um, the big brake shield that's usually on these. The only way you can remove that is by taking the bearing out. So, well actually the hub. I will be reusing these hubs if anyone is asking, but the one problem I do have is I have to grind this out currently and uh, this is part of the old bearing that came off with the hub. So, gonna just take a grinder, score it, and slowly work my way down to uh, pry this ring off the way I would do it as if you do have a vise at home which luckily I do I would put the hub in the vise and I do have a battery grinder that I'm just gonna cut right through the middle this thing should pop right out no problem pretty sure I use this wheel down to nothing trying to show you guys if you can see I cut into it just I'm almost at the hub don't really have a good good uh hit. let me get out of the light so if you guys can see I'm almost at the hub almost there so this thing should be off in the next few minutes a little fast forward this is the piece that I grinded off if you don't have a bearing puller, these it's really the only way. You gotta kinda loosen the, the the strength of the metal so that way it slides off the hub. But once you get once you get these off, it's it's I, I don't wanna say the hardest part's over, but now we can start reassembling the knuckles. Alright, for the next order of business, we're gonna be putting the lower ball joint in the bottom of the knuckle. I haven't done this too many times, so what I like to do is I like to take a little WD-40. Just, I like to wipe my finger just to lubricate it so that way there's no binding or no friction. They do sell kits to install ball, ball joints and I do have one. I have a snap-on kit actually when I used to do some wrenching professionally. But lately I've been seeing a lot of people just kind of hammer them in so I'm going to give that a whirl and hopefully that works out. You're going to have to remove the boot so that way when you are hammering it in nothing gets damaged. So if you take this little ring off right here, you'll be able to pop the boot down and that way you can safely secure it without having to uh, rip the boot because if these boots rip, that's pretty much uh, why ball joints go bad after a while is because a lot of the grease in here dries up. So try to preserve the boot as much as possible. If you take this ring off, you'll be able to slide the boot right down. comes out relatively easy. So you give it a few banks. Put the 
boot on. Minus a little grease, but it's on and functioning. Now we just gotta slide that ring back into place and put the new snap ring in and we're good to go. So this is that snap ring. Once you get your snap ring on, you're all done. Got both ball joints in. Pretty smooth. A little bit of a pain if you've never done it before, but you get the hang of it. So unfortunately, uh, I went to go start the bearings and hold on, let me show you. I think I ordered the wrong bearings because They just kind of fall into the to the knuckles, so these can't be right. I'm guessing these might be for the standard, like the one fives. So kind of kind of stuck on that at the moment, but the ball joints are all done. Gonna order new bearings, see what's going on. Got a few more things coming in, such as headers for the exhaust. Just gonna clean up, guys, and close up shop. But thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.